Ready. Good to go. Okay, today is Saturday, September 26, 2015. Um, my name is Catherine Bynum. I'm with uh, Texas Christian University working with the City of Fort Worth Latino Americans 500 Years of History. Today we're here with Mr. Ernest Rodriguez. Thank you so much for being here. We really appreciate your time and Thank your participation you. in Thank our you. project. So, um, let me just start off by asking you uh, when and where you were born. Born in Fort Worth, Texas. When? In 1934. 1934, okay. And who are your parents? Juanita and Rodolfo Rodriguez. Okay. And what did they do for a living? Now, when they, my father worked the packing houses when he came from Mexico. And my mother was, when she married him, she was stay-at-home mom. Mm -hmm. And then my father and I, my father in 1942, went in the Navy and got discharged in 1946. And uh, he opened up a small grocery store. And then later on in the years, we, my brother and I joined my father and we made, uh, started making tortillas and we developed that Rodriguez Festive Foods with 450 employees. And we sold the company in 2002. And I still remain active in one of the companies with my, one of my sons, which is my partner, in manufacturing tamales and burritos. Mm -hmm. Okay, and you, you mentioned that your father was in the Navy. That's correct. And he enlisted in 1942? 1942. Do you know where he served? In the Pacific. In the Pacific? Yeah, he stayed okay. in the Pacific. In, like an air carrier? Or? He was an air, air, air carrier. Okay, okay. So do you know if he saw any combat at all? I, he didn't talk much about it. Okay. You know, like a lot, of, a lot of men that have gone through that don't discuss too much about it. We just knew that he was on a carrier. Mm -hmm. And uh, we didn't see him again until 1945. Mm -hmm. So he spent most of all his time in the Pacific. And you said that your parents came from Mexico. What, that is correct. What part of Mexico? Guanajuato. Guanajuato. Um, and do you know what they did there before moving to the U.S.? Well, they came as children. Oh, they did? They, okay. they came to this, this country as children. Mm -hmm. And uh, do you know why they came to well, the Well, just States? like the, the American dream. Okay. You know, everybody wants to move up to this country for the American dream. Mm -hmm. and, and back in then, you know, my father, he just, he always commented the fact that, you know, he didn't want the country, he didn't want any benefits. He just wanted a job. That's all he wanted. Mm -hmm. He didn't. He didn't, wasn't interested in food stamps or anything. He mm -hmm. just didn't in a job. Is all he needed. And did they have a formal education? No. 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 Do you know about what grade they stopped going? My father never went to school in Mexico. Oh, really? and never went to school here. Mm -hmm. Yet he was a self-made man, and he had owned his business. And spoke English perfectly well, no accent. Mm -hmm. Spoke Spanish perfectly well. He and my mother both. And um, did they ever face any kind of discrimination or prejudice? None maybe? whatsoever. My mm -hmm. father's comment always was that discrimination is within this person itself. Mm -hmm. I've never experienced discrimination. No? Never. Never been called a racial name? Ne or? Never, never. Mm -hmm. And if, they, if I was, I didn't pay, pay attention to it. Mm -hmm. I never felt offended about it because I never felt offended. Mm -hmm. I knew who I was. I knew who I, where I belonged. And I'm an American citizen, born here in America. Mm -hmm. Do you know how your parents met? They met, uh, my mother was living in Kansas City. She was brought over when she was three years old from Mexico. And my father was living here in the United States. Mm -hmm. And my mother met her father for the first time here in Fort Worth. She found out that her father was come from Mexico and was living here in Fort Worth. So she came and met him here. And she met my father there on the north side. And she came back two years later, and they married here in Fort Worth. And so you said that she was brought to Kansas City. So were her parents migrant workers? No, she, my, my mother never met her mother. Okay. So her I, aunt and uncle brought her mm. to Kansas City. I see. I see. And were they migrant workers? Yes. Yes. Farmers mostly? Mostly. Yeah. Okay. And they all were here for the same reason, for American Dream. Yeah. To work? To work. Mm -hmm. Not for benefits, but mm -hmm. to work. So they came to Fort Worth, and or your your mother came to Fort Worth, and she, that's where she met her father. That is correct. That's also that is where correct. she met your father. That is correct. Um, did they? I mean, how did? How uh, they were in the same neighborhood. In the same neighborhood. Same neighborhood. Okay. And 
And you said it was the north side. There's the north side. And then my brother and I, when we went into school, the first grade, we didn't know how to speak English because we were out, born in the barrio. Mm -hmm. And uh, we, we, at that time, there were no bilingual teachers. We learned out of the same textbook as everyone else did. Mm -hmm. Now they tell me there's bilingual teachers. I don't know why. I don't understand. Mm -hmm. Because if you're going to learn English if you're in this country, and we learned out of the same textbook as everyone else. And my brother's a graduate of TCU, so, you know, we we were all educated. Mm -hmm. Our parents inspired that into us. Can you tell me a little bit of what the barrio looked like when you were growing up? I mean, were there paved streets? No paved were streets. No, no paved, paved streets. streets no street whatsoever. Lights? I can recall one street light, mm -hmm. yes. Yes, and everybody in the neighbor neighborhood, they either worked at the hide sales or they worked the packing houses or the railroads. Mm -hmm. That's the jobs that were available. Mm -hmm. my, my uncles, my grandfathers, and everyone in it. Everyone had that? Yes. Yeah. And you talked a little bit about your schools. Can you tell me what elementary school you I, I started in, in M.G. Ellis, there on the north side. Mm -hmm. And in 1941, I started there in 1939, 1940. I was born in 34. I was six years old. And in 1941, they closed it down and made an aeronautic school out of it. When they made an aeronautic school, they distributed the, the kids who were going to MG Ellis. Half of the, from the, Trinity, from the Marine Creek north, we all went to Circle Park Elementary School. From, from south, uh, they, they went to uh, Denver Elementary, there on uh, Central Avenue and then J.P. Elder, and then went on to Tech High, and et cetera. Mm -hmm. And was your school mostly Anglo, or was it Latino? It was, was it was mostly Anglo, mostly Anglo, mostly Anglo. Mm -hmm. and everybody walked to school. Mm -hmm. You know, we walked 10 blocks to school, because we, our home was right close to the Trinity mm -hmm. River, so we were born, we were all born at home. Four of us was born there, to, born at there home. at the house. Wow. The doctor would come to deliver us, mm -hmm. and, uh, we walked to school. White doctor? Anglo doctor? Anglo doctor mm -hmm. Pumphrey. I know because it's on my birth certificate. What is the name? Pumphrey. Pumphrey? Pumphrey. Mm -hmm. He's here on, he's, I understand his son or his grandson is a urologist here on 8th Avenue. Oh. <laughs> That's something. So, um, so were you ever punished for speaking Spanish in school? Never. 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 I can, not that I can recall. Mm -hmm. Never. Never. Can recall. How many, how many, how many Latino students were in the school with you? Do you think? Not many, yeah. not many. Not when we left. Uh, it wasn't until I, I went to in 1941 that I crossed North Main. I never had been across North Main. We were in the barrio, which was the north side. Mm -hmm. I never had been across North Main before in my mm -hmm. life, till I started school in, in, in Circle Park. We were kind of huddled up back in that area, which I didn't really mind it. You know, I, I wouldn't change my life, my childhood life for any any childhood life now. Mm -hmm. Enjoyed every bit of it. Didn't have any, a lot. No, we didn't miss anything because nobody else had nothing. <laughs> you didn't envy anybody. Right. Everybody was in the same position. In the same position, you know. Mm -hmm. So we, you know, you get accustomed, you, you, you go by your, you live within your means. That's today. exactly right. <laughs> um, so tell me about uh, how many brothers and sisters you have. I have one brother, and, excuse me, two, three brothers and two sisters. Okay. Uh, one sister is already deceased. Okay, okay. And so, where, where do you fall in that birth order? I'm number two. Number two. Number, out of six, I'm number two. Six children. Yes. And can you describe the house that you grew up in? We, was, uh, we used to call it a, a shotgun house because it was three rooms, one, two, three rooms. So our bedroom naturally was in the middle and we had a kitchen, we had a, my mother always had a small living room and we all slept in that one room. Yeah, all six of, all six of us. Wow. The baby bed was in there, my brother's bed's in there, my mother and father's bed in there. And yes, we didn't have no restroom inside. We had to go out to the back, this mm. was the outside restroom. Mm -hmm. But again, uh, there's no regrets. I don't think we. I didn't. I don't feel like I missed out on anything. It was all you knew. It, it was right? all, yes, right. Mm -hmm. And nobody else. Everybody. everybody was but there. you know, we were happy with what in the condition that we were in. Mm -hmm. 
I was very happy. I had a very happy childhood. Mm-hmm. Totally enjoyed it. Didn't have many toys, didn't have bicycles, didn't have everywhere we went, we walked. Maybe that's when we stayed healthy. <laughs> Probably so. <laughs> you didn't have all those video games. Not, and... That didn't exist. No television. <laughs> no television. But the ideal thing, I think, was very interesting, the fact that we learned out of the same textbook as everybody else mm-hmm. did. They were all in English, not no Spanish, and we had no, no, n- nobody to teach us how to speak the English mm-hmm. language. Do you remember trying to learn to speak English? I can't remember. Mm-hmm. I can't remember. We just pretty well kind of fell right into it. Mm-hmm. it we might have had to work a little harder, mm-hmm. but I don't regret it mm-hmm. that we had to work a little harder to try to learn it. Mm-hmm. And did your parents speak English? Yes. They, they could speak. They, they learned how to, well, my, my mother learned how to speak English. She was raised in Kansas City. That's right. Mm-hmm. And my father, he learned how to speak English, but on the job on the job, but we practiced our Spanish with Spanish all the time around the house. And as we grew up, we started mixing in the Spanish with the English, and that's mm-hmm. where we, we're bilinguals now, or Tex-Mex, whatever you want to call it, but that's, that's <laughs> where we're at place. today. That yeah. is correct. <laughs> Very nice. Um, so when did you graduate from high school? I didn't graduate from high you school. Okay. No, I did not graduate from high school. I left school early in the years. What I, did you do? I just, I, I, I just decided I just didn't want to go to school any longer. So I did not graduate from Tech High. Okay. Well, I attended Tech High two years, but I didn't quite graduate. And that's, that's Trimble Tech, right? Trimble Tech. But I did go back and went to night school and, and got my GED on okay. that. And when did you get your GED? Oh, my God. That's back in 1965. Oh, wow. So you were born in 34. That is correct. Okay, so I'm trying to... 65, so help me out. 29 years? Older than, older, older than that, older than that. <laughs> Probably in, in my late, early, early 40s. Early 40s? Mm-hmm. All right. Uh, what made you decide to go back and get your GED? I think the business. Yeah. My brother and I decided to go into business, and uh, I was lacking mm-hmm. uh, in my education, and that was encouragement mm-hmm. enough to try to. So did you start your business right after you left high school, or when no, did it, we, uh, no, it, we started business in 1963. Okay. In 1963, we mm-hmm. started a small tortilla factory there on the north side, and uh, we made, we grew it, and we surrounded ourselves by good employees, mm-hmm. and good people, and uh, we received a, uh, in, in, 19, in 1990, we were called to go up to California and we received one of the largest awards that was ever given to anybody in the tortilla business. It was a, a big banquets and all the tortilla manufacturers from all over the United States and, and Mexico and they all attended and we got the largest award. Mm-hmm. For, and here's some of the information that we have on the business that we, that we owned. What was the name of your business? Rod- Rodriguez Festive Foods. Rodriguez Fe- Festive, Festive Foods. Festive Foods. Mm-hmm. And you said it was mostly like tortillas? Tor- well, tortillas, burritos, enchiladas. So it was kind of like uh, a restaurant? Or? No, it was manufacturing. Okay. Manufacturing. Mm-hmm. And how did, how, did that, how did that get started? Where did you and your brother get the idea to start this company? Just wanted to start making tortillas, <laughs> but it developed into more items and more items, and we had brought in some people from one particular person from TCU, he was a microbiologist. Uh, what we didn't know, we hired people, we had a, a full-time CPA on, on premises, etc. so we learned that what we don't, we didn't know, you know, it's no different than a doctor. If a doctor, needs, he's not a dentist, and a dentist is not a doctor, mm-hmm. so you, you go to her. Mm-hmm. So when you left high school, what was it that you decided to do for work after you left high school? I went to work in a slaughterhouse, in a mm-hmm. packing okay. house. What did you do there? I was beef boner. I boned beef. <laughs> How long? 15 years. 15 years. So take me through a normal day of what it was like to work there. I was just, just Made a paycheck once a week and, and <laughs> I married and, and had children. Married? Yes, mm-hmm. I had children. What year did you get married? 
married in 1952. Okay. Married in 1952. And what is her name? That was my first wife. Okay. What was her name? Juanita. 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 Okay. Yeah. And then in 1977, I married my second wife. Okay. And what was her name? Socorro. Socorro. Socorro okay. Rodriguez. Mm -hmm. And we're married to this day. We're married. Mm -hmm. This is where this young lady comes from. <laughs> And how how did you meet your how did you meet Socorro? She worked there at Rodriguez, mm -hmm. and uh, I was not married at the time, mm -hmm. and we started courting, and and we married. Mm -hmm. And um, how many children do you have? I have a total of uh, four. four. I had children. five, one sibling, one 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 of my sons died mm -hmm. eight years ago. Okay. But I have four living children mm -hmm. now. And what are the names? Philip Rodriguez, Diana Rodriguez, Melissa, and Patricia. Okay. <laughs> All right. Um, so let's see here. Who do you feel like? What do you feel like is the most pressing pressing issue for Latinos in Fort Worth? Pressing issues. Mm -hmm. I feel like there's an issue that is bigger than others for Latinos in in the in the city. You know, I want to I want to address this. Mm -hmm. You know, we built a business, not the fact that we were going to go to Austin or anywhere else and say, well, I need I need some attention for this business to help make it grow. I'm Latino and I think I need benefits. We built a business on on just making a good product, and we've never been discriminated. And we've never gone for help for anybody either. We've been able to know what our position, what we do. Mm -hmm. We've never been discriminated. Mm -hmm. I know there's some businesses that are saying, well, I think I was take a look at some benefits because I am uh, Mexican-American or Latino, and I don't think we've ever proved that we've never gone into how would you identify yourself? Like, if you were you to say Latino, Mexican American, Hispanic, what would you say? Well, you can call. I can be called a Latino, now, uh, Mexican American, or, uh, uh, but I'm an American, mm -hmm. American, born here in America, mm -hmm. and I'm an American citizen. Parents from. from Latino or Mexican, whatever they want to be called. So you would just identify as American? Yes. Mm -hmm. yeah. Have you ever been engaged in any kind of political organization? Never have. Never? Never have. Why not? I, I didn't, I didn't, it didn't, never has interested me yeah. to go in. Uh, I, uh, I don't know what, 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 what organization I would, would have been interested in. in Joining, I have no idea. I know, I know a lot. Of, I know a lot of people. I know a lot of people. I know uh, Salespino. I know all these mm -hmm. gentlemen. I know all these all these people, but uh, I I don't participate in anything that, that mm -hmm. they do. I help out with their with, when they're doing their elections. I contribute to it, and, uh, and I think they're good people. Well, with money, etc. Okay. You know, help them with elections. Mm -hmm. So you donate to their campaigns? I do donate to the mm -hmm. campaigns. I do donate to the Why campaigns. Why donate to Salas Pino? Because I think Salas Pino has been a good man. He's, he's worked with us on helping us out on some of the business, some of the property mm -hmm. that we have, trying to get a tax deduction on some of the things mm -hmm. that we have. And, uh, and, and I like Salas Pino. Mm -hmm. I think he's done good for the community. Mm -hmm. I think he's done very well for the community. Mm -hmm. Would you say that he's a really great leader for kind of What's going on? Today? I don't know how great a leader he is. I know he's a leader, but I don't know how great he is. Mm -hmm. I don't know how I, I describe how great a leader he is. Why do you say that? Well, I, because I don't know how great a leader he is. Mm -hmm. I know he's a leader, mm -hmm. but I don't know to what extent he's a leader. Mm -hmm. Okay, I see what you're saying. So, who else do you feel like? Who's, who, who else do you feel like is a is a is a good leader in Fort Worth? Were the Hispanics? Mm -hmm. Or anybody in general. 
Who do you feel like? I don't know. I'm not involved. I don't get involved in politics. Okay. I don't get involved with the politics in there. Okay. Not at all. Okay. Um, well, tell me more about your business. I mean, you well, here's a, in, in yes, here's a, yes, here's another. Okay. When we sold, we sold our large business in 196, in 2002. Then we came back and said, that's what it says in here, mm -hmm. return to the business. Now, this is myself and my two sons, and this is my nephew. Who is who again? This is you. That's right. Okay. This is my son. This is my nephew, and this is a son here. Okay. This is the son that's no longer living. Okay. And when was this article? This was in, what does it say? 2000, 2005. 2005. Okay. 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 Oh, is that Ernie Jr.? All right, I'm sorry. I've got him wrong then. And this was in 2005, this story? That is correct. Mm -hmm. When we, we bought this company back from the original people that had bought us. And we manufactured burritos and tamales. Mm -hmm. And Who's we're probably the largest, the fastest, to produce more tamales than anybody in the United States. Produce 340 tamales a minute. That's a lot. That's a lot. <laughs> that is a lot. Whose recipe are you using? Our own recipe. You made your own recipe? Yes. Are you a good cook? I'm not. <laughs> no? I'm not. <laughs> Was there anybody that you took inspiration to? No. You just came up with your own recipe? This is. Yeah, you and your brothers? My brothers, yeah. Mm -hmm. And then when we sold out the company, then when we reopened this company again, we just brought our recipes with us. Mm, okay. Okay. And then you said you sold the company when? 2002. 2002. Yes. And have you been retired since? I've been retired since. Yeah. Well, semi-retired. And then I was in the feed business with the partners with my, but the, my this son here. Mm -hmm. We had a feed store business in Springtown. In Springtown. Yeah, and since then I gave that part of it up. Okay. And I'm still continuing to be partners in Rodriguez Foods, this company here. Okay. And where are you living now? Are you still living I live in, in Fort Worth? I live in Fort Worth and I live in Springtown. In Springtown. I, have a, a, I live on the ranch and I have a home here in Fort Worth. Okay. Very nice. Well, is there anything that you wanted to also tell me that maybe I didn't ask about anything at all? That I think you've done a well job in covering. Well, thank you. I'm glad. Well, thank you so much for being here. I, we really appreciate your time and your participation in this project. Well, I want to thank her for encouraging me to come. She <laughs> yes, said, thank you, you, you very said, much. She said, Dad, you need to go. She said, you know, she, she, I guess she's real proud of what we've done, my wife and I have done, mm -hmm. in raising them up. And she's a graduate from TCU. Oh, really? Yeah. Very nice. Go Frogs. Yeah. Go Frogs. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Well, thank you so much. Appreciate thank you so much. Yeah. Thank you. Sure.